Hey guys, it's Zane from the Bankruptcy Club. I'm going to be talking about 18 Chess Speak today. I'll kind of give you a quick rundown of how it's played and what's going on. This is by All Board Games. It was kickstarted earlier this year. This is a pre-production copy, but it's pretty much what you're going to be getting. But there's also some options, there's some uh, fancy art on another board that I don't have set up right now. This is a small bank game. It's $8,000. It's kind of blurry, but you'll just have to trust me. It's right there. This is a full capitalization game that when a company floats at 60% of the stock sold from the IPO, uh, it receives 10 times its par value into the treasury. Uh, it is designed to be a shorter game, done at about three to four hours. And one of the things that helps it speed through that is the export of trains at the end of the set of operating rounds. So that's super blurry. You'll just have to trust me. There's a little train with a... With a... So... This one starts like 1830 with an 1830 style auction. Mm. So if you know how that works, then you're already a step ahead. So there's all these privates laid out. I'll go through what all they do. And it's really hard to see this one because of the glare. You'll just have to work with me. I'll try and figure that out when I get there. So you can, on your turn, buy the cheapest one or place a bid on a more expensive private. Buying the cheapest one, you simply pay the price. In this case, it says 20 bucks. You buy that, and you're done. Uh, to place a bid on a one of these other privates, you need to pay $5 more than the price, or $5 or more than the, the list price, or you need to beat the existing bid by five or more dollars in increments of five. So you can, on your turn, you place a bid on one of them, go around and place your bid on another one, and so on and so on and so on, until someone buys the cheapest. When someone does that, this goes away to the, the purchaser, and then you resolve all the auctions on each private in order with everyone who has currently had a bid. If at any point you get to a private that doesn't have a bid on it, the auctions stop, and then the normal turn order begins again with either purchasing cheapest private or placing bids on the more expensive ones. And I have these out of order. Yeah, that looks better. So what do they do? Um, yeah, clear them off the board to show you what's up. The Delaware and Raritan Canal. You do it now. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Oh, focus for a half second. That guy. It's 20 bucks. Provides you revenue of $5 and it blocks this hex until it's owned by it's owned by a major corporation. Oh, the camera's having a hard time. Let me see if I can focus it. Yeah, that'll work. All right. The Columbia and Philadelphia Railroad. I'm not going to mess up the camera again by having to get in there close. I'm just going to mess it up the back here. Columbia and Philadelphia Railroad blocks these two hexes. Is that right? C and P. Yep. Okay. Blocks those two hexes until it's purchased in by a major corporation, and once it is owned by a major corporation, that major can place a combination of straight and or gentle curves into those hexes as an additional action on its turn. The Baltimore and Susquehanna does the same thing right here, and they have some little iconography on them. And it even says extra build. Trust me, I don't want to mess up the camera again. But those, both of those companies, the Columbia and Philadelphia and the Baltimore and Susquehanna, are extra builds into those blocked hexes. The Chesapeake and Ohio Canal blocks this hex, but the owning company can place as their entire action place a station marker into Berlin and also build city onto that hex at the same time. However, there is an $80 mountain here that you'll have to pay for at the same time. So you can teleport in there and throw one of these guys down on it, but it costs you 80 bucks. You don't have to be connected and it's, uh, it's a nice little way to get across the map. The Baltimore and Ohio comes with a share of the Baltimore and Ohio. 
So you pay hundred bucks, you get a shade of Baltimore in Ohio. That's that's what it does. The the Cornelius the Cornelius Vanderbilt cannot be bought into your company. You get to buy the the man himself, um, and it comes with a random president share. So at the beginning of the game, you would take all of the president shares. Shuffle them all up, and you would throw one down, and whoever wins Cornelius Vanderbilt gets the president's share of that company. So in this case, the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad. So that one would be out, and the rest of these would be back, back in the IPO, be purchased by other players. When somebody buys the when somebody buys the Cornelius Vanderbilt, I keep calling them the. When somebody buys Cornelius Vanderbilt and gets that president share, you immediately set the par value anywhere between you know, $70, 80 or $95. Let's say hypothetically $95. You put the stock marker up there, but you can't see. You're just going to have to trust me. Oh, there it is. So you set those as soon as you buy Cornelius. And that company has now set a par value and has an initial stock value for those two that president's share. After you're done with that auction, you go into a stock round. On a stock round, in the stock round, as a stock action, you may sell any number of shares and then buy one share. If that share is a president's share, so pay twice the value. You set the par value, 70, 80, or 95. So let's say I want to buy the CNO president's share because I want to run the CNO. Uh, I set the par by at 70 because I'm the I'm buying the presence here. I get to decide that. I pay $140 to the bank, and this becomes mine. Every subsequent share bought from the IPO, which is this section right here, is paid for at these prices. So the CNO shares, as long as they are on the board in this square, cost $70. The Pittsburgh and Lake Erie, as long as they're on the board in this square, they cost $95. That's important for later. Once 60% of a company has been sold, so the president's share counts as 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Sure that's right, because sometimes I count wrong. That appears to be six, 60%, one 10% for each symbol. I then get starter. And I get 10 times the par value, which is 70, so I get $700 into the bank. That also, you get a number of home station and additional station markers of varying prices. Your home station will go on the board. You, there's two more. There's one for your stock value and one for, so one for your stock value, which you can't see. There it is, stock value. And there's one for a revenue tracker, which I do not have set out. That's just a hand, you know, a little aid to help you remember what the company runs for. Players can go around buying buying stocks. If you sell stocks, every time you sell a stock, it goes into the bank pool, where it says right there, bank pool. Um, however, shares in the bank pool pay dividends to the corporation, which is something I'll get to in just a minute. And bank pool limit is 50% of a corporation, which means that no more than five shares can be in the bank pool. There's already three out there, and I really want to sell two more. I can. Sell two, I will get $70 for each share sold, and then it goes down for each share put into the pool. Next player, if he, wants to, he or she wants to sell CNO, they can't. The bank pool is full. Uh, somebody will need to buy one of these shares for to allow anyone else to sell into the bank pool. At any time, whoever controls the most shares of a company is the president. So in this case, I have four. If someone were to buy all five of these out of the bank pool, they would become the president and take over operation of the company. After everyone has gone around, and passed in order. At the end of the stock round, all companies that are sold out, that is nothing, all companies that are not sold out, 
have shares in players' hands. If they are not in the IPO and there are none in the bank pool, the stock value goes up one step. So, Zach, on your turn, my your turn, I mean the company's turn, because players do not take turns, only companies take turns in the operating round. They operate in descending stock order. This means that the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie would go first, followed by the CNO. In this case, Pittsburgh and Lake Erie will have its home station out. It may lay or upgrade a single track tile, place one of its station markers in a legal spot, which it can trace a route to, and it has, it has its home station and it has two more. After placing station markers, it will run its trains. Uh, it will decide what to do with its dividends, either pay them out or withhold them. And then it has the option of buying more trains, and then this turn is complete. So laying track, you must have a route. A route is... Oh, it's doing it again. You can do it. Back in, put you back into it. So a route is the continuous line of track from one of your station markers. So... This is all legal. That, that's really hard to see, isn't it? No, how about, how about that? You can kind of see that for a minute. Cool. You see it comes along this way. I did, what if I did a different one? Nope, that's not legal. So you can't have any, any track pointing into these off boards like that. So this is not a legal placement of that tile. But that's not either, because again, I just did the same thing. This is okay, but it doesn't really solve the problem that I had, which is the reflection of the glare from the light. Well, you don't have to deal with it. <laughs> that's kind of all I got to say about that. So there you go, that's a legal route. So now the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie can build into this hex. It's got to pay $80, which is expensive, but hey, maybe sometimes that's what you got to do. So it can build there. On its next turn, if it had turn, it can build, oh, it's right here. It can build into Hagerstown. After it builds, it may place a station marker. The next station mark for the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie costs $40. So it has to have $40 in the treasury. They can go right there. That is legal. Later on, when you get into green trains and eventually brown, you will have upgrades to the cities, which allow you to have more track coming out of a city, more options and more routes. So later, Pittsburgh and Lake Erie can upgrade Hagerstown into this shape, or another one, another legal shape. So you can see this adds another station there, and it has some more tracks. And that's worth more, 30 instead of 20. You can't see that's worth more, so trust me, that says 30, the other one says 20. After placing tiles and tokens, you run your trains. If you don't have a train, and no company will have a train on its first turn, you, your stock value goes back one. If you pay a dividend of zero dollars, your stock value also goes back one. So if you choose to withhold. Um, if you did have a train, let's say it had this two train, it can run to two stops. Gosh, that glare is just terrible. <laughs> Oh, that's a little bit better. All right, now you can see that. So, it can run to two stops. Uh, cities are a stop. Dits are a stop. Uh, these red off boards. So this is a stop. This did is a stop. And this red off board, those are stops. Those are the three things. Uh, with a two train, you get to go to two of them, and one of them has to be your one of your station markers. So with a single two train, I can run to this city and this dit, or I can run to this red offboard and this dit, this town. We call them dits. Some people call them doinks, dots, whistle stops. They're they're little and they're not worth very much. But they, and they're inconvenient. There's nothing good about them. Um, so a two train, I can run two stops. So I can go one, two, or I can go one, two. Uh, in this case, since this tile is green, we must be in the green phase. Uh, the red offboards have different values depending on the phase of the game. 
So Pittsburgh is worth 40 in the yellow phase, and 50 in green, 60 in brown, and 80 in uh, gray. Since I have placed a green tile on the board, that means we must be in the green phase, so I will use the green value. In which case, Pittsburgh is worth 50, and this did is worth 10. My other option is to run this town to the city, which is 30, and this dit, which is 10. So I would choose uh, 60, because that is the most, so you will run it for the most. I can then pay out or withhold. If I withhold, I put all $60 into the company treasury, and the stock value goes back one. If I pay it out, I pay 10% of the dividends to each share outstanding, or in the bank pool. Just straight into the bank pool, just trust me. So that means that if I own 60%, which is the maximum, I would get 6 times 6, I would get $36. Um, if there are any shares still here in the IPO, they pay nobody. So let's say there were four shares left. I bought all six shares and they're mine, and nobody else believed in me. They left four shares over here. These four shares pay the bank, which means you just leave the money in there. Uh, if they were in the bank pool, they would pay the money to the treasury of the company. So if I paid out six dollars, I owned six and the bank had the bank pool had four, I would get thirty-six and the company would get twenty-four. After running your trains, you may purchase one or more trains provided that you have room to buy more trains. And I'm going to try and do this without messing up the zoom. Let's see how this goes. There is a really awesome chart on here. You can do it. Come on. Oh, there we go. Train limit. Like a really... There we go. So you can see train type 2, train limit 4. There are seven of them. There are... Uh, train type 3, train limit 4, train type 4, train limit 3. So at the beginning of the game, you can have four trains. So I could, with my, assuming I was the running the uh, Pittsburgh and Lake Erie, I started out, I had the $950. After the company's first operation, I could conceivably buy as many as four two trains, because they're $80 each, and I have $950 in the company. Later on, that's going to be a problem because the trains get significantly more expensive, um, ramping up, you know, to three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, six hundred and thirty dollars, and finally nine hundred dollars. So the price goes up. You're probably not going to be buying four trains a turn later on in the game. But hey, man, I don't know your life. Um, if you don't have a train and you do have a route, so in this case, this company has a route. It must own a train. If, for whatever reason, it looked like this, where it had just the home station and nothing else was built, it doesn't have to own a train. But, because it didn't pay dividends, the stock value still goes down. It still goes back. Okay, So every round it doesn't have a train, it still goes back one. It keeps going back. Eventually it hits the wall and then it starts to slide down. But you're not obligated to own a train because you don't have a route. There are some uh, interesting shenanigans you can do with that. You may optionally elect to purchase from another company a train at the end of your turn after running. Both presidents must agree to the price. And at the end of your turn, the operating company must end with the same number of trains or more which means that a company cannot sell trains and may only buy them. So the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie ends its turn with no trains. I have ended up in a position where I am also the president of the Chesapeake and Ohio. Okay, so it looks, let's say, hypothetically, I have this situation and pretend there's a whole bunch of money here and there's no money here, okay? Pittsburgh and Lake Erie must own a train because it has a route, but it has no train. So it must buy the cheapest, it must buy a train from the bank for $80, or it must buy a train from another company for any price, as long as the two presidents agree. 
since I am the president of both companies, I agree to whatever price I set because I am awesome and I always choose correctly. <laughs> so the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie can spend $1,000 for a two train. I mean, the two trains aren't worth $1,000, but there, maybe there's a reason that you need to move money from one company to another. Maybe this company now is going to buy a whole bunch of trains. There's a lot of strategy that I'm not especially good at it, but I know it can be done. So that's an important thing to do is that trains can be bought between companies. Okay. As long as both presidents agree. And if you're the president of both companies, boy, I hope you agree. Cause if you don't, something weird's going on. Okay. Buying trains pushes the game forward as does the exporting of trains at the end of the OR. So you can kind of see over here, there are multiple ORs depending on how far into the game you are. You start in the yellow phase with yellow trains. You have one operating round and then a stock round. After each set of operating rounds before going into the next stock round, you export the top train, which means to remove it from the game. So at the end of the first operating round, let's say six two trains have been purchased. Okay. There's just one left. So we're gonna go from here to here. We've passed through this, uh, you know, no train, the export train symbol. We take the remaining two and we get rid of it. It's out of the game. That means when we start the next OR, the first train available is going to be one of these threes. Okay. Now, as soon as someone, you don't, uh, you can see that this train is green. But when you start an operating round, you look at what the current phase is, not what the next phase is. So we started this operating round with no three trains purchased, which means that we do not go into the two operating rounds until the next set of ORs. So we go through this single OR here, right? People will buy, companies will buy some number of trains, let's say four, the fun of it. And then we end. Again, we go through the export train, we get rid of one of these, we go into a stock round. Things happen in a stock round. We go to set, start another set of operating rounds. So you come back over here. Somebody has purchased a green train, so we are now in the, the green operating round, which means that there are two of them. So we go operating round, operating round, export. Okay. So the exporting of the trains will help push the game forward. However, you never export a permanent train. So once you get to the fives, you never export a five or higher train. Twos, threes, and fours only. And then you'll have, you know, once you, someone buys a five, you're going to have three operating rounds for the rest of the game. The twos, and again, this is a super nice thing that they figured out some time ago, is that it's got twos are rusted by fours, threes are rusted by sixes, uh, fours are rusted by D trains. And if your train is rusted, it is removed from the company immediately as soon as the, the uh, that rusting train is purchased. So if I have a whole bunch of twos and someone buys a four, I immediately lose all of my twos, even if I haven't taken the turn with one of my companies yet. Which is probably going to be tough. Hopefully you've planned for that. Um... And that continues with the threes and the fours. The fives never rust, so they are the first permanent train. So once you get a five, you never have to worry about not running a train. Um, there are a couple of sixes. Two sixes. Once somebody buys the first six, the D trains become available. There's only two sixes, so they don't want those. you probably want those last. The D trains become available. The D trains are very expensive. They are $900, but there's a couple of things about them. One is that they have an unlimited range, which means that if you have track built all the way across the entire board, I was going to try and set this up and then things happen. Get busy. They have an unlimited range. which lets you go all the way across the board to over that and then almost there and eh, whatever you get the point 
the point is that they have they can go to an unlimited number of stops. So in this case, you can go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and if I had planned better, I would have gotten the tiles out to do an eighth stop over here. Things all the way across. Or you can like zigzag through and pick things up. The only thing is that you cannot run through a city occupied by someone else's tokens at any time, even on the smaller number of trains. So if I had a D train, but that's that's not a great color for this. Is how about oh red? I don't stand that. Oh, there's a nice pop on it. So I have a D train, but the uh, what is that? The Strasbourg has blocked me here. I can only run one, two, three. I can run into the city, but I can't run out of it because there's no room. I can't. My train can't get through. Blocked. That's too bad. If it was over here, I can still get through because there's an open station. My trains can run all the way through. If I had done this, that's fine. If something like this happens, I can run this side up to the CNO, or I can run the other side. But I can't run. I can't run to both these station markers because the CNO is blocking me. You'd have to upgrade that to allow some pass through the uh, bit of a digression there the D trains additionally have a trade-in value a discount price nine hundred it's a uh, seven hundred dollars it's in there you can kind of see that that's good enough what that means is that if your company owns any other train that hasn't, you know, any other train, which is typically going to be a five or six, possibly a four, you can trade it into the bank for a $200 discount and buy a D train for $700. So if somebody, if a company owns a four train and has $700, they can trade the four train into the bank pool and buy a D train, which then rusts the four. So it's really great for that person. If you own a five or a six, you can do that too. So it is a slight discount to the D trains, which have unlimited range. If you don't have a train and your company has, I'm sorry, if your company has no train and it has no money, you have to buy a train. You must buy a train, which means spending your personal money to buy a train, which you don't want to do because personal money is how you win. Company money counts for nothing. Only player money matters. Spending player money to buy a train is usually a bad plan, unless you're smarter than me, which you probably are. So spending $300 out of pocket, that's a thing. Maybe you had to do that. Probably don't want to spend $900 out of pocket. Don't want to spend your own money. You certainly don't want to sell your stocks, because if you don't have enough cash, you got to start selling stocks to make up the difference. So if you have $500 and you got to buy a $900 train and you're selling stocks that were $50 and $65, maybe, maybe you're in trouble. <laughs> once you get to the, uh, the first four train, oh, sorry, once you get to the first three train, you may purchase in the privates. The company may purchase a private for between half and double its face value. So the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, you can pay $40 to $160 for it, from company money to player money. And that private company goes into the, the company charter, and then it has the power, which in this case was the teleport with the token. Uh, the Cornelius Vanderbilt has no buy-in. No buy-in. No buy-in. And instead, he goes away when that company operates. Buys a train. Buys a train. Goes away when that company buys a train. Um, game ends when the bank is broken or if a player goes bankrupt. Like, like I said, buying a train out of pocket, you're paying your own money. If you don't have enough money, um, the game ends. So, possible. I have once beaten somebody in a game where they went bankrupt. I went bankrupt and still beat them on stock. Probably doesn't happen where you end up in first. But the game does end in bankruptcy, or if the bank breaks where you know you spend all eight thousand dollars is in player hands or company. 
players of the company. Um, other MacGuffins, you have the the fun ooze, which are cities that don't that don't touch. There's only two of them: Baltimore and Philadelphia. When they upgrade to green, you get these upgrades where they are, you know, two stations on the same hex that don't intersect. They do later in, in brown to connect. And then there's a single gray upgrade for the ooze. People call them double O's. We locally call them ooze because it looks like an ooze. Uh, Washington, D.C. also has a special a special upgrade. It's worth, it's worth slightly more. 30 as opposed to 20. And it's got an angle to it. And then it has its own its own upgrade path as well. That's better. Goes all the way up to gray. That's where the big money's at. Um, I like it. It's a nice. It's a nice game. It's got a good good pace to it. Plays pretty quick. You get it done in four hours or three hours or less if you're if you're bad and you just go bankrupt. That's a thing. Um, Got good. It's got good stock market. Um, I don't know about if manipulation is the right thing, but it does have the fixed par values on stocks and how that relates to buying stock when its value is one hundred and twenty-five dollars. You know, CNO's valued at one hundred and twenty-five, but you only pay seventy dollars for it because it's still still in the IPO. You know, and then you can sell it. You can make money. You can turn that around. Um, it does have a yellow area on the stock market. Stocks in the yellow do not count against the stock limit, the cert limit. So in that case, if the black company is over there, if the black company is over there, and the cert limit is normally for four players 16, those um, five pieces of paper that I had, the five certs that I had for black don't count against me. Which means that if I played it really well, I could have, you know, up to five pieces of paper above the limit. But as soon as you go into a stock round, and this and the stock price is out of the yellow, you have to enter compliance by selling shares until you have, you know, 16 again for a four-player game. Or less for more. Uh, so there's some there's some stuff you can do with this. Um, the dits, the dits and the double dits don't upgrade. Those are final decisions. Uh, so notably, like Wilmington and Columbia, and then these here. These will be decided early in the game, and then you're stuck with them for the rest of the game. And you just kind of have to deal with it. Yeah. That's it's. Well, back in the old days, they couldn't figure out how to upgrade a town to turn left. You just had to keep turning right for your entire life until they invented a new, a new technology for steam engines. Um. Yeah, if you can get this one, I would. It fills a nice, uh, fills the nice uh, space where you want to play an 1830s style full cap game, but you don't want to spend six hours playing chicken on the auctions. Um, I would suggest getting a copy if you can. Thanks for watching.